Hello, welcome to WinGenKits.com. This video is one part of a series of videos intended to demonstrate some of the construction methods and techniques used by the do-it-yourselfer who is interested in designing, building, and using wind turbines for producing electricity. In this video, I will narrate the process of making the coil assembly used in an axial flux alternator. In order to wind coils, you're going to need a coil winder. You can make this fixture yourself out of common materials laying around your shop or from the local hardware store. It can be as simple or as elaborate as your imagination allows. The actual size and shape of the coils is determined by the spacing and length of these bushings. Suggested dimensions for this pattern are available on our website. Securely mount the coil winder to a sturdy workbench. Then secure a rod to the workbench which will be used to hold spools of magnet wire. In some cases, it might be beneficial to wind multiple strands of smaller wire instead of one large strand of single wire. You don't necessarily need to have multiple spools of wire if you want to do this. For example, with one spool of wire, you can pre-cut several lengths and carefully lay them across the shop floor, then wind them all together. Develop a consistent procedure and wind all of the coils in the same direction. At this point, it doesn't matter which direction, just as long as they are all the same. After about 20 or 30 turns, adjust the shape of the coil by squeezing the sides. This is to help maintain that the sides are straight and that the coils all fit together. It's important that all of the coils are exactly the same so be sure to count the number of turns carefully. This is a simple but very helpful tool used for taping the coils before removing them from the fixture. It's just a thin strip of metal that's been bent by hand. Slip it under the coils and use it to pull the tape back through. After two sides of the coil are taped together, Carefully remove it from the fixture, then tape the third side. Before moving on and making the rest of the coils, it's important to check the dimensions of this coil so that it fits inside a predetermined pattern. This will assure us that all nine coils will fit together. Then make the rest of the coils. This is another simple fixture that you should make in your shop. A full size pattern can be downloaded from our website. The fixture is used to temporarily hold the coils in place while they're taped and soldered together. When placing the coils on the fixture, be sure that the winding direction is the same for all of the coils. Then tape them together. Refer to the wiring diagram on our website to connect the coils together in a three-phase star configuration. When making the solder joints, place them in between two adjacent coils. 
This gives them a little extra space where they can be tucked away cleanly. Next, use a propane torch to carefully burn away the insulation on the wire where it's going to be soldered. Then use fine sandpaper or steel wool to clean the ends of the wire, exposing the bare copper. Twist the ends together, then solder. Repeat this process for all of the connections. Organize all of the wires on the outside of the perimeter, turning the solder joints inside, and then tape everything in place. The final step is to solder the terminal buttons in place. They are specifically designed to be cast inside the stator with the coils for the purpose of providing a clean and flush electrical connection. And this is the completed coil assembly ready for casting. We're going to show you how to do that in the next video. We hope this video has been helpful and here at windgenkits.com we thank you for watching. Welcome back. In the first video, we wound the coils and then soldered them together to make the coil assembly. In this video, we're going to take the coils and cast them in a fiberglass resin to make the stator. So let's get started. For convenience, this is the stator mold that we offer from our website. Being a do-it-yourselfer, this is something that you can easily make. We use a laminate material which allows the stator to release easily after molding and provides a great surface finish. The coil assembly should fit snugly around the center core which will keep it in perfect alignment inside the stator. Determine the location for the terminal buttons. Then drill a hole through the bottom plate which will allow these to be bolted into place. In this next step, use tape to seal all of the open edges inside the mold. Take special care to make sure that all of the edges are sealed and that the tape is smooth and free of wrinkles. <laughs>